I remember the day in which I first went to a place very, very, extremely far away from my home without leaving my house. It was late in the night when my dad came home with a small bag in hand. Every time he brought something with him from work, it was something amazing or something that created curiosity. But this time, I looked into the bag and I saw a small, plain cardboard box. I thought it was so boring, I didn't even take the time to look at it. A few minutes after he arrived, my dad took the box out of the bag, grabbed his phone from his pocket, stuck it into the box, plugged in his headphones, and said, look in. I turned the box around and I saw two small lenses. I brought it closer and I looked in. Wow. That was what I felt when I saw children running, when I heard people talking beside me, when I turned around only to see more and more of this amazing landscape. I was truly amazed. And as the image started to fade, I took it off and I simply stared at my dad. Many people say that young generations like us cannot be surprised with anything. But believe me, this, this can surprise anyone. This was the day in which I realized that, ex that virtual reality has the potential to change our lives forever. I was truly fascinated and I decided to research. I found out that virtual reality, commonly known as VR, is an artificial computer created environment in which we get to experience a parallel reality. I know it sounds terrifying that of living in a parallel reality, but just like any invention, VR is undergoing development and commercialization, which all inventions must go through. Tell you what, I'll give you an example. When aviation was first commercialized, people were thrilled, but at the same time terrified at the idea of airplanes. And as time went by, they gained confidence. And now air travel is a part of our everyday lives. The truth is that the virtual reality market is expected to grow around 51% every year during the next four years. This means that prices will decrease and that areas for content and software development will grow exponentially, giving the opportunity for more people to live these experiences. Experiential, uh, virtual reality, uh, no, Google Cardboard is a device created by Google in order to commercialize the VR market. It is extremely easy and simple to use. The only things you'll need are a smartphone, a pair of headphones, and the cardboard itself. This is a way of broadening the possibility for people who either can't afford or aren't willing to pay $600 or more to live a VR experience. But this isn't only about if prices are going to increase or decrease or if markets are going to grow or not. It is about the experience that VR creates. Virtual reality is purely based on the art of immersive experiences and how they shape us and our lives. Almost 2,500 years ago, Confucius, a Chinese philosopher, acknowledged that experiences are the best way to learn. And he said the following, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. Experiential learning is one of the best learning techniques that is being increasingly integrated into education. It, it consists on immersive experiences that join theory and practice and take us a step farther in knowledge progression. This is because with experiential learning, we are not limited to a manufactured or a controlled knowledge. We have the freedom to see things in our very own way and to understand them in ways never thought of before. We can allow a deep understanding, create original ideas, accelerate learning, and create a reflective environment for ourselves. David Kolb, an American philosopher, created a cycle in which he described four essential stages to experiential learning. The first is the encountering of a new experience or the revival of a previous one. The second is the reflection that is made on the experience that has been lived. The third one is the most critical stage. In this stage is where we analyze the reflections that we've made. This stage is very critical because it is here where we form actual understanding and when we form concepts. The last stage is the application of the analysis and the reflections in new scenarios. This stage is generally referred to as a stage of testing because it is in this stage where we observe how experiential learning adapts every individual so that they can apply their new knowledge on what people call the real world. But this isn't only the end of the cycle. It also is the beginning. And this is why it is a cycle. 
because it is a repetition of experiencing and learning through what we have experienced in order to live new experiences. I know it sounds like a riddle, but that is the real magic, that we never stop learning. If we close it up a bit more and we take it to classrooms, we can see that experiential learning allows students to fully understand and deeply engage in their subjects. Experiential learning is a great learning tool. If it wasn't, then why would universities like Harvard or Stanford send their students to live new experiences abroad? They do it because it generates a very deep level of understanding and involvement. And it simply is more fun to learn by doing stuff than by my teacher, again, giving me another lecture and me, again, not understanding. Do any of you recall a moment in which you've studied for really long hours, you've, re you've read really long texts, listened to a very long lecture, you've tried everything, but nothing works? Or any time in which, you know, people say that to do things right, you need to love what you're doing, but you just can't find the love? You can't engage in a subject? Has anybody else lived, that, lived those experiences like I have? <laughs> well, I have good news for us. Experiential learning prevents these types of things from happening because it generates actual understanding and it allows a very deep engagement. So, what if we take, what if we take virtual reality to enhance learning experiences? If we connect both VR and experiential learning, we will create an incredibly powerful learning tool. Virtual reality can be an asset for learning because it will allow us to take students from our classrooms to literally anywhere in the world or to any scenario that we wish to create for any subject. This can also broaden the possibilities for many students worldwide to live experiences that will enhance their learning. An iPad has an average cost of $600. A cart with 20 iPads would cost $12,000. If we compare this cost to that of a VR headset, the difference is amazing. Google Cardboard starts at, 10 to 50, at 5 to $10. It requires a smartphone, which averages at the price of $250, and headphones, which start at 10 to $15. The total price would be $5,000 to $6,000. That is more than half of what a classroom set of 20 iPads would cost. However, Google Cardboard has been seen by many with a lot of disbelief because they argue that needing a smartphone requires a lot of things and that there are not enough smartphones in the world. Well, the thing is that in, at the end of, two, of 2016, there will be 2 billion owned smartphones. That is 25% of Earth's population and increasing year on year. It's as if we said that everyone that lives in Europe and Africa had a smartphone. To me, that's a pretty big number. In the next four years, smartphones will go over three billion. It's as if we said that everyone in North, South America, Africa, and Europe had smartphones. We can see that the possibility for actually using VR for experiential learning exists and that it has the potential to change the lives of millions of students worldwide. The New York Times organized a learning experience in collaboration with UNICEF. It's called Clouds Over Sidra. Curiously, this was the same simulation I used the first time I went to a, ver to a very, very, extremely far away place from my home. I was intrigued as to whether I could apply this at my school in Colombia. With support from my teachers, we organized a very short experiment, a very short basic experiment. We, organized, we set up three groups, each with 10 people, and then we wrote a, f a short five-question test to be answered after the students performed a set of activities that enabled them to answer the questions. Group one was given some texts which they could analyze, highlight, and take notes on. Group two were given the VR headset and its simulation. And group three was given both the simulation and the texts. After the tests were completed, we graded the tests out of a total of 14. They were graded based on a right or wrong answer basis. After they were graded, this is what we found out. For group one, for group two, and for group three. There it is, you can see it. Group three was way ahead over groups one and two. It had 96% when virtual reality was blended with texts. We had 20% 
over groups one and two. This shows that the power of this learning tool is great, that we can do great things with it. But this study, this cannot be an approved study, and it really can't be an approved experiment, and I can't really prove a lot of things with it, but I strongly believe that using virtual reality as a learning tool can generate a great impact on our current educational system. But not only that, with this tool, we can help to close the social breach. We can give everyone, despite of who they are or where they come from, equal opportunities, equal greatness. Welcome to the new world. Virtual is the new real. Thank you.